Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to model what it looks like to make minimum payments on a credit card, and we're going to make a few assumptions. Let me list out these assumptions for you. First of all, we're going to assume that we owe $3,000. Our interest rate is going to be 28%. That our daily periodic rate is based on a 360-day cycle, and that when you pay, your minimum payment can't just be any number. It's got to be 1% of your remaining balance, or $15, whichever is greater, plus any interest that you owe. Now we're going to put all this together into a spreadsheet. And what I'm going to do is first type out the columns. I've got my days, I've got the remaining balance, what do I owe? This is going to be my column for interest. I'll just put the word interest there now and I'll add more later. And I also want to keep track of the minimum payments and the balance after minimum payments. And this looks a little sloppy, so let's click our first row right here. Let's bold everything. There's the bold button. Let's also, in general, change the format of every cell. You can do that by clicking in this area, going and centering, centering vertically, and then wrapping so it looks pretty. There we go. And we'll clean this up some more in a moment, but what I want to now do is establish my days. We're analyzing this for one year, or 360 days, not 365, 360. Some credit cards do that. And our billing cycle is every 30 days. So if I type in 30 and 60, I now have a pattern set. I can extend that pattern for a full year. I click here, I press shift and down, or you can drag. And then see again with this corner, I have that blue square, I just drag that down and I reach 360 automatically, which is a little bit faster than typing them all out. My balance starts at 3,000. Now, this already called um, the number sign, it's already formatted there, but if you don't get a number sign and don't want to type it, you can click Format, go to Number, and pick Currency. It'll recognize then that anything you type in should be in dollars. Our interest. The interest is new for many of you, and what we're doing here is we're taking our remaining balance, and what are we doing to it? Well, we have to multiply it by our APR, but that APR, 28% divided by 100, 0.28, then you want to divide that out to get what the interest will be each day. And that's where the 360 comes in. And that interest is, is applying to your remaining balance for all 30 days of your billing cycle. So multiply it by 30. And that's going to guide us right now. For a formula, you type equals, and now you can start a formula. You want to call to cell B2. You can type in B2 or just scroll over with the arrow key. That's what I just did. And B2 is where the remaining balance is. And our formula is actually written in the heading of the column, but we're going to mimic it now by pressing times or shift 8. We want to multiply that by 0.28 divided by 360 times 30. Hit enter, and there's our interest. Again, if the formatting is not in dollars, you can go to form, format, number, and currency. You can pick which one you want. I like this one right here. Okay, our minimum payment. This one, you know, this is a little complicated. I, I, that's, that's how this is set up. And the rule is that you pay 1% of the remaining balance if that 1% is more than $15. In this case, 1% of $3,000 is $30, so you're good to go. Then you also want to pay that interest. You have to pay that off as well. Now, I don't want to always check to see, okay, is that remaining balance, um, is 1% of that remaining balance more than 15? I want the spreadsheet to check that for me. So we can type in if function, if, really useful. Type in equals if. The first thing you try type in an if function is the condition that you're testing. What am I testing? Well, I want to know. I want to know if I take 0.01 or 1% of the remaining balance, if that 1% of the remaining balance is less than $15, the rule is I have to pay $15. So if this is my condition, what do I do if that's true? Well, if that's less than 15, what do I have to do? I have to pay 15. That's my true value. I have to do that. If that's not true, if 1% of that amount is not less than 15, so it's more than 15, then you can actually pay 
the 1%. So it's 0 point, or I'll just do point zero 0.01 times B2. And all that's saying is, okay, look at 1% of B2. And if that amount is less than $15, then do this. The first thing here, separated by commas. If that's not true, do this. So right now, this is going to take 1% of B2 and get 30. You see that? And it's doing that because 1% of this is more than 15. So it's going to do that. Now, with that amount, I also, I can't just pay that off. I have to also pay my minimum payment here. So I type plus C2. So you might pause the video and write down some version of this formula. There are other ways to write it. That's just what worked for me. And then hit enter. Now the balance is a little bit easier to write as a formula. You type in equals. And it's going to be the remaining balance plus the interest and charges minus your minimum payment. And I hit enter. 2,970. So it's gone down a little bit. It's only gone down $30 because even though we paid $100, $70 of interest was added. And this is the problem with minimum payments, right? It, it's barely gone down here. Now we can keep extending this, but the first thing I want to do is teach the spreadsheet how to get the next remaining balance. I'm going to type equals and then call to this cell here. So that's our remaining balance that we have to pay off in the next billing cycle. So another 30 days pass. We haven't paid this off. We're just going to pay the minimum payment again. And this time, all of the rules are going to keep applying. So we click on those cells, scroll over, and there's that black cross. And we can now drag this down, and it will repeat the pattern. Look what it's doing here. At this cell, it's calling to, here's what it's doing. It's calling to B3, which is our remaining balance, and multiplying it by 0.28 divided by 360 times 30. It's doing the same thing. So our interest has gone down because our balance has gone down. But our payment has only gone down by a dollar, right? It's looking again at 2970. It's saying if 1% of that is less than 15, pay $15. But it's not, so we have to pay 1% of that amount. And again, the balance is just saying, take the remaining balance, add the interest, and subtract the minimum payments. And now our formulas are ready. We highlight this, scroll over, click, and just drag down. And here I'm going to bold the result. We're looking at um, 360 days. We're looking to see what happens. We've got our remaining balance at the start is 3,000. After all those minimum payments that we paid, we're down to 20. 2,659.15. So the two questions are, how much interest have we paid? Type equals sum to add, put a parentheses, and then I just like to, to press the up key and then shift up, 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 hit enter. You can also just type in C2 colon C13. It'll add up all those numbers there. And here we've paid them $795 of interest and 31 cents. And our minimum payments, let's do the same thing, sum up, Shift, hit enter, right? We've paid them um, $1,136.15, but our bill hasn't gone down by $1,136.15, right? Because it went up by $795 and went down by $1,136. So you can also look at the total change of this bill by looking at these two numbers, right? Up 795, down 1136. So if we press equals, you can just check this. This number minus this number, it's gone down $340. And isn't that amazing? To get the bill to go down $340, we had to pay $1,136.15. And that is why this is a trap. All right, I hope this helped.